Dear brethren of the priesthood, I greet you this evening in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. With the sacred injunction, come unto Christ. I testify that the Lord expects us to bring souls unto him by inviting all men to come unto Christ. It truly is the thing of the most worth unto you. In fact, your very ordination is to preach faith and repentance and remission of sins that you may bring souls unto me. It is the greatest offering that man can give to God. In fact, you, quote, received your first lessons in the world of spirits and were prepared to save the souls of men. You cannot fail. That counsel applies to you young men as well. Perhaps we're at the time in our ministry in preparation for the Lord's second coming when, with renewed emphasis in love, we must call men to repentance. We must invite them to come unto Christ, testifying boldly in His name to bring the mighty change into the hearts of our people. As Aaronic and Melchizedek priesthood brethren, we are commissioned with a purpose to, quote, visit the house of each member, exhorting them to pray vocally and in secret to stir them up in remembrance of God, to turn them to the Lord with full purpose of heart. We do not just visit the active to visit or the less active just to get them out to church, although that may be part of what happens. In essence, we visit to help the head of that home, male or female, to become the spiritual leader in their home, to lead their family to Christ, to pray, to fast, to read the scriptures together. If that happens in our visits, all else will take care of itself. How can we make such visits with power and authority, especially to the less active? The most important element in our preparation is to humble ourselves mightily before God. We must be believing. We must not doubt nor fear. We must pray fervently throughout our visits that we may, quote, Speak the thoughts that I shall put into your hearts, and you shall not be confounded before men, for it shall be given you in the very moment what ye shall say, even that portion that shall be meted unto every man. The results of these kinds of visits testify of themselves. For example, on a first visit a man quits smoking after twenty-five years and prays to God to know the next step. A wife tells of her less active husband's dream that messengers would be sent and says, We believe, we will believe, whatever you tell us. An unscheduled phone call is made at a critical moment, touching a woman who was turning to inactivity. Someone said, Coincidences like these are God's little miracles wherein he desired to remain anonymous. Remember, not only the teacher but the learner must have the Spirit of the Lord. You as the teacher must do all in your power to prepare the hearts of men so the Spirit can teach. May I suggest seven scriptural performances that, if humbly employed, will immediately invite the Spirit into your heart and the hearts of others. You may want to write them down. Number one, pray. Pray for the Spirit. Ask those you teach to pray for you and for themselves while you are teaching. Ask for discernment to understand the needs of those you visit. For example, upon bended knee, a wayward daughter is blessed in prayer. Parents repent that very evening, begin to attend church, a temple preparation seminar, and have now been sealed as a family. A seven-year-old responds to his less active father who says he won't pray with, please pray, Dad, take Mom and me to the temple. That family has also been sealed. Number two, use the scriptures. They are the words of the Lord to us, and the Spirit of the Lord will speak through them to all men. For example, a testimony is given on a verse relating to baptism in one of the visits. An investigator says, I do be believe God sent you. I'll be baptized. A scripture is read on another visit about multiplying and replenishing the earth. A young couple with one child humbly confesses their unrighteous decision to have no more children. Number three, testify. 
If you follow his promptings, the Lord will direct you to testify frequently throughout these visits. Testify that the Lord has sent you. As you do, the Holy Ghost carrieth it unto the hearts of the children of men. Let me again illustrate. In testimony, a priesthood leader quotes a sentence verbatim from a sister's patriarchal blessing. Another one. One testifies of life after death from the scriptures, only to learn of a couple's recent loss of their little one. Number four, use music. Using recorded hymns or singing the songs of Zion with or to the saints in their homes as prompted will always bring the Spirit of the Lord. For example, a priesthood leader said with a smile, I could never sing. I have a terrible voice. But we were prompted to do so. My voice was as the voice of an angel. The less active man wept and returned to the church. A home teacher said, I sang with his children. The crusty old fellow cried and humbled himself for the first time in years. Number five, express love and gratitude to God and man. Express love openly for God and for his children, and the Spirit will profoundly be felt. Let me illustrate. Touched by the spirit of a visit, a less active teenager expresses love for parents by whose love his heart is turned to God. Love is expressed to a dissident group of less active members, and 20 return to sacrament meeting that same day. Number six, share spiritual experiences. Spiritual experiences have great impact upon men's souls. Share them as prompted by the Spirit. For example, a less active husband tells of last night's dream. He repents that very evening as he recounts the experience. An inspiring missionary story is told. As a result, two less active sons are now serving missions. Lastly, number seven, perform priesthood ordinances. In the ordinances, the power of godliness is manifest. Bless the saints. Bless the sick. Bless the homes of the saints. Encourage others to seek for priesthood blessings. For example, in an unscheduled visit, a blessing is received by a college woman who has strayed in a transgression. She is caused to remember God and returns to the Institute. Another man is raised directly from his sickbed. A daughter receives a priesthood blessing and finds the peace that has eluded her since her father's death. Brethren, these seven suggestions, one or more as needed, will always bring the Spirit of the Lord into your visits. Are these not some of the spiritual gifts that Christ gave that prepared the way for the Holy Ghost to testify and change men's hearts? Spiritually give of yourself, and your visits will not then be routine, but you will discern the needs of the saints. You will commit them in a spirit to act. They will repent and come unto Christ. Yes, it's true, there are a few sheep who will not respond to their master's voice, who are not willing at this time, and I repeat at this time, to respond, because Jesus taught that he could only bring all men unto him on conditions of repentance. With those souls, we just go on loving them and try again at a later time when they may have a more repentant heart and will respond to the Spirit. May I share a personal experience of my wife? While on a state conference assignment with me, she accompanied the Relief Society president on such a visit. As shepherds and servants of the Lord, they had tremendous success. And then about a year later, while I was teaching some priesthood brethren how to make such visits, a 35-year-old man told me of my wife's visit a year ago and said, May I tell you a secret? My entire family had decided the day before your wife came to visit that we were leaving the church offended never to return to God. I bear witness to you that we felt the Lord speak through her as she stirred us up in remembrance of God and our ordinances. I am a member of a bishopric now. I would not be here today if it were not for her. He then smiled and said, How I wish now that I had more carefully watched her invite this spirit upon me and my family as it now falls upon me to go out tonight and do my very first home visit. Yes, brethren, the sisters can assist in this work also. May I then summarize? We are to be instruments in the Lord's hands to bring souls to Christ. Perhaps this is the greatest gift one man can bestow upon another. We must better relearn how to invite the Spirit of the Lord for such an endeavor, even humbling self to the dust. The process described works for all men, young and old, 
who qualify with faith, hope, charity, and love. You young men encourage your fathers and companions to hold such visits. You have a right to be shown how and to motivate and teach us as well. Remember, these suggestions are not meant to change the processes for home teaching, visiting teaching, or auxiliary visits, but are a suggested means for bringing the Spirit into all such visits. The process described for inviting the Spirit works the same with a rebellious child at home, a discouraged individual, an associate, even yourself, as well as in visits to homes. Let us commit as one leader did. Quote, there will not be one less active member who has turned from God in my quorum or class. I will do all in my power to see that mighty change come into his heart. In conclusion, may I remind each of us that our motivation must not be just for duty for the Church or as a result of a calling we have, but our divine motivation must be for the love of God. Then will the miraculous results occur. I bear witness from the Book of Mormon that for our labor we will wax strong in the Spirit, teach with power and authority from God, receive the grace of God, be restored unto the grace we once had, and then with that grace or enabling power of God we might thereby obtain charity, even the pure love of Christ. May that gift, even charity, be ours. May we give of ourselves to the spiritually needy, the spiritual gifts Christ gave. I know of no greater joy that can come to man than the soul that repenteth. May the Lord bless us to learn how to bring men to Christ and in the process find him ourselves. I humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>